Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Bendix booth. We're going to talk about air disc brake maintenance. So with that being said, what we're going to do is we're going to start off. Uh, this is our air disc brake, our uh, ADB22X. This brake will work on the steer and drive. They're exact same caliper. The pads are the same for steer and drive, so you don't have to do use different kits. So what we're going to start off with, as you can see, during a uh, preventive maintenance, you can, uh, we have a couple different ways that you check to see if the pads are wore out. We have an indicator on the housing that there's an indicator on, on one. So there's a casting mark on the, on the caliper and a casting mark in the carrier. When them two casting marks line up, that means your pads are wore out. Also, too, you want to view inside between the wheel and the caliper. You can look inside and we show you already where we have a pad. This pad now is at minimum DOT thickness. This pad is at brand new. So once you went ahead and found out that you need to replace your pads, first thing you want to do is remove your tires, obviously. On the back side, we have a rubber cap. The rubber cap covers up a shear adapter. The shear adapter, what this is, this is a tool that we use to back the brake off and adjust the brake, all right? So if you get too monstrous on this, you can break the shear adapter. We have you break that shear adapter instead of uh, breaking the adjuster mechanism inside the caliper and have to replace the caliper. So once you go ahead and you get the shear adapter on there, you go and you get a 10 millimeter wrench. Use a 10 millimeter wrench and it's just like a slack adjuster, all right? If you back it off, you turn it counterclockwise and adjust it up tight, you turn it clockwise. So as you back this off, you can see the tappets are rotating back in, okay? So as these tappets roll back, rotate back in, that gives you the clearance that you need. Also too, once you, before you get them all backed in, you go ahead and loosen them up. And to remove the pads, you take a pair of pliers, pull your pad retaining, or your clip off, flat washer, Remove your pad retaining pin and your pad retaining bar. Everything that I touch, you get brand new in a pad kit. Okay, so that's the nice part. Once you go ahead and do that, then you remove your pads. Your pads remove out. So basically what you have here is you have a brand new pad and a wore out pad. So you're already halfway through your brake pad replacement. Okay, so that's what that looks like. So once you went ahead and, and uh, got them re removed, you also want to check your, guide, your tappet boots. They're here and here. You also want to check to make sure that the tappet discs are free to turn. All right, they're not going to spin, but they're going to move. Okay? So you want to check both of them to make sure that they move. So here's the tappet boot assembly. That's what's in here. So this tappet boot assembly is pressed into the caliper housing, and all you'll see is the red the red disc, all right, the red boot, and the edge of the disc. Okay, does that make sense? So when these are completely retracted, that's what it looks like. When they're extended out, like they are with that, they extend out and this is what they look like. Okay, so now what, the reason why you wanna check this disc movement is because on the inside of it, there's a bushing. Now this bushing isn't seated in, I left it out, but there's a bushing in there. So. Inside this caliper, they're, uh, the, they're called a tappet. They're a threaded tube, okay? That threaded tube needs to be able to spin in that bushing 360 degrees. All right, does that make sense? That's the reason why you want to have that. If these are, do not move, if they're seized up, what's going to happen is, is every time that tappet starts to rotate out, the boot's going to start to turn and it's going to destroy itself. Once it destroys itself, then you're going to have a hard time because a lot of contamination and getting into the caliper. So that's what you want to inspect is there. Once you have the pads out, you also want to inspect the guide pin boots. And the guide pin boots are in here, so you want to push the caliper all the way inboard and check the guide pin boots. All right, and they're right down in here. And if the guide pin boots have any kind of holes or damage in them, it's going to seize up the caliper. What happens when the caliper guide pin seize up? You get one pad where it doesn't move, right? So you're going to have a lot of issues. So this is all part of your inspection. As you can see right now, after you take the wheels off, the two tools you're really gonna need is a pair of pliers and a 10 millimeter wrench and a good set of eyes. You need to do a great inspection. So once we went ahead and checked that, we also wanna check the movement of the caliper. 
to make sure that it moves freely up and down. Okay? As long as it moves freely up and down, we're good to go. If you have any kind of movement of the caliper on the guide pins, you'll need to measure the guide pin bushing wear, just like a cam bushing. Right? If your cam head moves up and down a lot, it means your bushings are wore. Same way with a caliper, if it's moving around on the guide pins, you probably need to rebuild the, either rebuild the caliper or buy a, a reman or a new one. Okay? So once we went ahead and done that, now we're going to continue to back our tappets all the way in, right? Because we need them backed in to put in new pads anyways. So I'm going to continue to tap back them in until they come to a stop. So once they come to a stop, you can feel it. You can also see the disc, all right? Remember, it doesn't retract into the caliper. It stays outside, so it stays in there. Once we went ahead and pulled them in because we inspected the, the tappet boots, they're good. We inspected the guide pin boots, they're good. We looked at the movement of the caliper. The other thing we want to look at is the carrier. This is where the pads set, right? So as long as that, you know, as you look at that, you want to clean all the debris in there because you're going to get contamination, dirt, that type of stuff in there. You want to clean that all out with a wire brush. Get that clean again before you put new pads in. The other thing you want to make sure is there's no damage on the carrier where the pad's set. You don't want any damage that may catch the edge of the pad as it slides along. All right? The other thing you want to make sure you do, don't put anti-seize on them. Leave them dry. If you put anti-seize on them, that acts like a glue, so all the dust and dirt gets stuck in the anti-seize, the anti-seize becomes a rubbing compound. It'll damage that and it'll also damage the pads. Leave them dry, it doesn't hurt them. So make sure they're clean, dry, oil-free, no anti-seize, none of that blue silicone that they use on the hydraulic pads for noise, you don't need any of that. Just put them back in dry. So we wanna make sure that all four, car all four carrier pads are clean and no damage. Okay, does that make sense? So once we went ahead and done that, and we got all that all cleaned up and we're good to go, we're gonna take a new set of pads, all right? We're gonna put the new pad in. Friction tied towards the rotor, right? Makes sense, doesn't it? Friction side towards the rotor, all right? Take your other pad, slide that one in. All right, so we've inspected tappets, guide pin boots, caliper movement, all right, guide pins, movement, make sure that the guide pins are still in spec. Put our new pads in. Everything that I've touched so far comes in a pad kit, so you don't have to buy anything special. You buy one pad kit, one pad kit covers two wheel ends or one complete axle, okay? Take your pad retaining bar, put it back into position. Put your pin in, right? Take your new washer. Take your new spring clip, okay? The spring clip just pushes in. Put it in the hole, when you push it in, it snaps. Pads are in. Pad retaining bar is on. Take your 10 millimeter wrench, right? Because that's what we use. And which way do we go to tighten these up? Clockwise, right? Lefty loosey, righty tighty. So clockwise, we start rotating them out just like you do a drum brake. Adjust them out. Pads make contact to the rotor. Just like a drum makes contact to the pads make drum to the drum. Take your wrench, back it up. You back your pads up, your adjuster up, three audible clicks. You're all done. Three clicks. Once you've done the three clicks, take your new cap that comes in the kit. It snaps on. You're good to go. So that's a maintenance, all right? In the meantime, while you're doing your maintenance, you always want to make sure that you check the rotors for any cracks or any deformities that may take it out of service. <clears throat> our rotors, and I don't know if they can see it or not, but there's a chamfer in our rotors. Can you see that chamfer? On the edges of, of the inboard plate and the outboard plate, there's a chamfer. 
It's an indicator how the rotor's life is doing. So as the chamfer wears out and goes away, that tells you that the rotor's wearing out. So during your PMs, you lo also look at the chamfer on the rotor. So they're indicators, okay? Doesn't take away from measuring them. You still need to measure the thickness of the rotor to make sure if you're doing a pad change, make sure you measure the rotor thickness. If the rotor thickness is more than 50% of rotor life left, you can go ahead and leave it for another pad change. If it's below 50%, just like on a drum, you're gonna to wanna to change the rotor at the same time, right? Because you're not gonna get another pad life left. Okay? To change the rotors, obviously you gotta remove the caliper. Just like on a car, you change a rotor on a car, you gotta remove the caliper, same way. Remove the caliper, hub and rotor comes off as one, because the rotor's attached to the hub. Pull it off, remove the rotor, put your new rotor back on, put your new wheel seal in, put it back on, tighten your axle nuts to spec, hub, hub torque spec, put your caliper back on, and when you put the caliper back on, you have to torque the caliper bolt mounting bolts. Okay, and we pre-torque them at 20 to 60 foot-pounds. Alternating sides, there's three per side. And then we final torque at 350 to 400 foot-pounds, alternating each side. Once you're all done with that, then you can go ahead and put your new pads in. Make sure that the caliper moves freely. As long as the caliper moves freely, you're good to go. Here's the thing during your PMs, as you're doing your PMs on your trucks, <clears throat> or every time you go underneath the truck, make sure that the parking brakes, if you're on the drive axle, is released and check the caliper movement, the in and out movement of the caliper, right? Because the caliper's got to slide on the guide pins. As long as the caliper slides on the guide pins, you're good to go, aren't you? Okay? You also want to look at the pads, make sure there's no difference of thicknesses inboard to outboard, okay? So if the caliper doesn't slide on the guide pins, then we got to do a wheel off inspection. There's no way to grease this. This is a sealed unit, so you're not greasing them. You can't measure brake stroke because the push rod's internal. You're not going to measure pad thicknesses, and neither is DOT, but they're going to look at them. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's your PM. Okay. <clears throat> It'll take you about 10 minutes a wheel if you sit down and actually do a good PM on it. But it's always visual inspection and caliper movement. That's what you have to be cognizant of. You've got to pay attention to that. As long as you got that, you're good to go. All right? <clears throat> so what I want to show you now is a chamber. This is a single diaphragm chamber, right? Like you see on a drum brake. The difference is, is the push rod and the seal. Okay? Push rod is rounded over, all right? <clears throat> because inside here, the arm is, has a cup. And this push rod, as you tighten down the nuts on the chamber and draw it in, it engages onto this cup. So when the, if you put air to the push rod, it extends out and it moves the arm back and forth, which extends the tappets, all right? You also want to make sure that the seal is good and not torn because this is, you know, keeps the water out of the adjuster mechanism back here. So if you ever have to replace these, this is what it looks like. The diaphragm on this one, you can replace because it's a service diaphragm, all right? So it's no different than any other replacement. But if you want to replace the diaphragm, you got to pull the caliper, the chamber off because you can't get a hold of the push rod, can you? Because otherwise you take that clamp loose, cover flies off, and so does the push rod, right? So you gotta remove the chamber to replace the diaphragms, okay? So once you went ahead and done that, you make sure that you got a little grease around this rubber seal. You put it back in and you engage it back in there, tighten the nuts down equally side to side as you draw them down, because you wanna draw that down square into that arm. Okay, you don't want to draw one down all the way and then, all the, and then the other one. Two things could happen. You may not get good engagement in here, and you may leave your little leak path on the weaker side that you tighten down. All right? <clears throat> so basically what we've done now is a complete inspection and pad change.